Hello all my Merrymakers and welcome to Merrymaking Mondays. My name is Becca and Merrymaking Mondays are all about helping you learn something so that you can make something merrily. Um, usually it's knit or crochet and today is no different. I am going to be starting to teach you the basics of sock making. Um, because uh, I've seen uh, uh, there's Erin from Crafting Kitty who recently made her first pair of socks. I've heard a lot of other people say their life's ambition is to make socks. Um, so um, there are some basic things about socks that I'm going to start talking about starting today. Um, this is going to be a multi-video series. Uh, there's just, socks are their own animal. I'm going to warn you right now. Um, so, we're going to start at the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. Haha. -ha. Points if you get that reference. So, um, let's get to it, shall we? All right. So when people think about sock knitting, they usually think about something that looks mostly like this. Um, in case you guys are not super familiar, um, this is uh, the second second sock that I am making for my son uh, with the middle of nowhere pattern by Crafted by the Fates. If I'm a really good girl this year, Santa will bring me a sock maker. So I will link that in the description box below. <laughs> um, so a couple of things that people are scared about with socks. Number one is how skinny the yarn is. Um, number two, how skinny the needles are by association. But I'm here to tell you, you do not have to make socks out of this yarn. You can make it out of something like this. Now, this is going to be more what more people think of as a house slipper or a winter sock. But especially for beginners or people who are who've not made socks before, I would definitely recommend a worsted weight yarn. Um, so, in teaching, in knitting a pair of socks with this worsted weight yarn, by the way, this is Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Uh, this is Retro Stripe. Um, it is 100% acrylic. It is a medium four. So, first off, we're going to be using much bigger knitting needles. Now, what they have uh, in the recommendations here, let's see if I can't tighten that up just a little bit so you can read it too. Tighten it up now. There we go. Is a 5 millimeter or a US 8. Um, so one of the things people get scared about is needle choice. I'm going to widen back out here. Doo -doo -doo. Um, so when you are choosing needles, you have multiple choices. Um, you have DPNs, which stands for double points, because literally it is a needle, knitting needle with no cable, but a point on each side. Um, for this particular sock, I am using what is known as, uh, a method known as knitting with two circular needles. Um, now this method can get confusing when all your needles look the same as mine do. Uh, so uh, if you are new to this method, I definitely recommend if you get matching needle set like I did, which I got this from Amazon, hashtag not sponsored, but you know, it's becoming the site to get things from. Um, get a little nail polish, Paint the tips of one set a, a different color, and you're good to go. So, uh, first thing I'm going to talk about is sizing. Now, this is a pair of store-bought socks that are 
a hair too big for my daughter. But we're going to use these as a guide on how big to make these socks. And then uh, this is part of a set. There's one more of, uh, and it is a sock sizing set that, again, got from Amazon. And again, hashtag not sponsored. And taking a pre-existing sock, especially if you are a person who doesn't like their feet touched or doesn't like touching feet, to serve as your basis is a good place to start. So, the first thing uh, is, okay, if you don't mind measuring feet, is to measure the widest put. If I could talk today. Measure the widest part of the foot, which is usually, and I'm not about to put my foot up here, <laughs> but it's usually basically the part right after the toes. That is the widest part of your foot, nine times out of ten. So you put the sock down or you put your foot down, da -da -da, and you measure how wide the foot is. Now this sock is almost exactly three inches. I didn't know that. It's beautiful that it is three inches. Um, so the circumference, uh, let's see, 1.5 times 1.5 is a number that I cannot do in my head. Alexa, what's 1.5 squared? 1.5 squared is 2.25. Okay, 2.25 squared. And then pi is 3.15, so we're just going to say 2 times 3, which is 6. <laughs> so uh, we're talking a circumference of 6 uh, inches. Now, especially for smaller socks and smaller yarn, you might feel more comfortable measuring in centimeters. But since the centimeters aren't as defined on this particular ruler, um, I am using inches. And because it was so close to one inch, uh, or sorry, three inches, that I'm just going to go with it. So, her foot circumference is about three inches. So, the next, we will cut that out if we can. All right, then. We, we square? All right, cool. I don't know why the, I think I m must have uh, jostled the camera in, unintentionally there, because it almost, uh, yeah, it almost fell. But anyway, um, what I was trying to say is I know that a lot of knitters slash crafters don't like to do gauge. But here's the thing. If you are creating a wearable, and it is especially a fitted wearable, such as socks or a hat, you want to do gauge because... If you don't, it will be either too big, too small, or not fit right. And you will be mad. So save yourself some hassle. I know it's quote-unquote extra time, but if you make it wrong, you're going to spend the extra time making it the right way anyway. So, alright. So when you're making gauge, here's the thing. Especially with socks and hats. Do not make uh, estimate how many stitches you need to cast on based on flitting knitting flat. And what I mean is just going back and forth. You need to do a gauge of what your knit looks like in the round. Okay? And I'm just doing an elastic... Uh, what, uh, bind on me method and by elastic I mean it kind of stretches is known as the long tail cast on and probably need to show you guys how to do that which I probably will go back and do that you know for when we're actually casting on which will probably be the next video, to be honest, because we're just talking the basics here, and we're already at 10 minutes, and I don't want to bore you. 
All right, it doesn't matter how many you cast on to do a gauge, just, you know, some number greater than 10 is always my, my goal. All right, and then, you just knit a couple of rounds. Now, again, you knit, or my suggestion would be to knit at least 10 rounds so you get a good idea of what your gauge looks like. So I am going to knit 10 rounds. Pause, you know, I'm not going to do that all on, on camera because that's going to be boring. But I'm going to pause this video and then I will see you after I have 10 rounds so that I can show you how to measure your gauge and how to do your estimation of what your sock is going to look like. All right, so now I've done about 10 rows of just plain stockinette stitch um, to in the round to get my gauge. Now, um, whether you'd like to do your gauge over two inches or whether you like to do your gauge over three centimeters, whatever measurement uh, unit you're using, use consistently. So for example, I did her, her diameter in inches, so I'm going to do my gauge in inches. Um, all right, and so I'm gonna try to measure this up along the bottom of the V's and then I find the edge of the V and I start counting. So one, two, three, four, uh, believe it or not, I did lose count because I got distracted. All right, we're gonna start again. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna go ahead and call that seven. All right, so get out my trusty piece of paper here. So we've got ah. Shh. All right, so we've got seven stitches per two inches. Okay. All right. And now, if you remember, we calculated the diameter at six inches, which that means six times seven is I'm going to need to cast on about 42 stitches. Now, I personally like to go for a multiple of four. Okay, uh, and this is actually for a lots of different reasons. Uh, one is if, especially with the smaller, uh, that is not the smaller yarn, that is the thicker yarn. Especially with the smaller yarn, when you have much larger numbers and much more needles, usually, especially if you have a if you're doing this on a double pointed set, what it is, is you've got a set of five needles, which means you have four resting needles and one working needle. So having those stitches equally divided up among those four needles is really good. The other reason why is when you do your heel and toe, the final number, or beginning on, uh, uh, or the beginning number, if you do a toe up sock, is usually equal to whatever you cast on divided by four. And I like whole numbers. So, 
The question is, this is 42. Am I going to round up or am I going to round down? Well, number one, this is a software child, a fast growing child. Um, number two, this is a house sock. And number three, I want to, this sock to last a while. So because uh, even though this is a stretchy sock, because look, this is sock and and it still stretches quite a bit. Um, I am going to round up and say that my final number of stitches in the round is going to be 44. So, we're almost done for this video, folks. Um, this is where you guys come in. Do you want to learn toe up or cuff down? So, in case you're not super familiar with the parts of a sock, you've got your toe. You've got your heel, you've got your cuff, and right here in this area, right next to the heel, is known as the gusset. Okay, um, this is this sock is actually a really good example of what an afterthought heel sock looks like, and if you guys are really brave, we can learn that too. So. Um, I am going to encourage you more than ever to comment in the comment sections below because whatever gets the most comments, that's what we're going to learn next Monday. Or start to learn next Monday, I should tell, say. So, until then, my merry makers, I hope that you will join me for what you're working on Wednesday. And make what makes you merry. Ciao.